Hello and welcome to another episode of Blake's Take where I unpack customer experience in three short minutes or less. I wanna talk about data. Today there's this arms race over who can use data in a smarter way to engage customers and do it faster. And I have two great examples for you today of companies that I think are doing a really great job of engaging their customers at the right time in the right place with customer data. The first example comes from retailer Target. Target has done something really interesting when it comes to their pregnant female customers. Target can actually predict when a woman will have her baby because she starts buying certain products. And if you've been pregnant, you know that the first thing you do when you find out you're pregnant is you start looking for vitamins that have magnesium and other healthy benefits that are good for the baby. So when a customer starts buying these neonatal pregnancy vitamins, Target knows that she will probably start buying baby products very soon in addition to an assortment of maternity products. And that's a big business for Target. So what they did a few years back is they started targeting these customers that were buying these vitamins, but they didn't overtly target them with baby products because they knew that their customers are a bit sensitive and if Target is overly aggressive with their targeting, with their advertising around baby products, that customer is going to say, hmm, that's kind of weird that Target is sending me only maternity products and baby products. I'm a little uncomfortable by that. I don't know if I want Target to know so much about me. So what Target did is they actually hid the products that were targeted among a sea of products that were not relevant. For example, let's say it's a maternity dress juxtaposed next to a bike or a lawnmower. So the customer finds the product she needs and doesn't feel creeped out by Target being overly aggressive and knowing a little bit too much about their customer. And this was very successful for Target and they reported gains of, I believe, over a billion dollars from these maternity profits. So companies today, when it comes to data, even if they have the data, they need to act sort of like an introverted best friend that is a good listener, that knows when to insert themselves in the conversation, that doesn't talk or blab too much uh, to their friend. And so you see, if you, if you too know something about your customer that can benefit you and help you sell more, you should be very careful with that knowledge and be careful with how you engage that customer. The second example I have for you today comes from one of my favorite e-commerce retailers and they're called Wayfair. Wayfair is a multi-billion dollar company and they've been around for I think more than 10 years and what they do well is home goods. And they realized at a certain point they needed to do more for the customer in the form of offering customers more tailored mobile experiences. So what they did is they offered this new photo app where a customer can be out in their lives at a restaurant, at a hotel, at a friend's house. They see something they like, oh my gosh, that couch, that is a really cute couch. I need that in my family room. The customer can go take a picture of that couch and then use the Wayfair app to identify the same product or a similar product on Wayfair's website. And after implementing this new customer engagement app, Wayfair reported many, many gains. I think their customer retention improved that year by over 50%, over 50% growth of customer retention, which is very good. So the point of these two examples is that if you can use data to make customers' lives easier and better, but do it in a tasteful way, you will absolutely create and retain more customers. But data is a sensitive topic and you need to be careful around how you use it. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.